Hi friends, today to put Jofra Ragnarsson from the His Dark Material series into the spotlight. His Dark Materials is a trilogy of books. It's been turned into a not so great movie called The Golden Compass and a much better TV show called His Dark Materials. For the moment, only the first season of the TV show has come out, which pretty much correlates the first book of the series and to the movie. Hence why this video is a part one. As more seasons of the TV show come out that correlate to the other books of the series, I'll be able to make additional parts of this character spotlight. Jofa Ragnarsson is the king of the armored bears for part of this series. Greetings to you, great king. Why do you disturb me? He's obsessed with the idea of having his own demon. I once heard that what Yiv wants most is to be human. It's why he hired me. But unless you are a witch and can magic him a demon, you will fail to please him. He's so obsessed, in fact, that he ends up being more human-like than bear-like, which ultimately leads to his downfall. The name Jofa comes from the old Swedish name Jova, or from the old Norse name Jofa. Originally, the noun Jofa meant wild boar, however, this changed over time and became to mean prince. Obviously, considering Jofa is a king, this makes sense. His surname, Ragnarsson, was actually made up by the author Philip Pullman for the series. However, he was likely inspired by the name Ragnar. The name Ragnar is Old Norse. It's made up of two words, Ragn and Ar. Ragn comes from the Old Norse Rogner. As a word, this means power or power of the gods. As a name, however, the meaning is slightly changed. It means advice, counsel, decision, but it also has religious connotations. The idea of religious connotations really points towards Jofa Ragnarsson being more human-like than bear-like. Panzerbjorn or armored bears don't have a religion. However, Jofa Ragnarsson is very tied to the Magisterium, which is a huge religious force in the human world. You have Israel. In a jail controlled by bears who are, in this case, controlled by me. Ar means army leader, general, or warrior. We know that Jofa Ragnarsson killed his own father. First creature you killed was your own father. He's definitely a warrior, and as king, he definitely leads the armored bears, who are a type of army. There are quite a few differences in Jofa Ragnarsson's character between the books, the movie, and the TV show. The first one I'm going to talk about is his name. In the books and the TV show, he's called Jofa Ragnarsson. I beg your pardon, Jofa Ragnarsson. However, in the movie, he's called Ragnar Sturluson. As a matter of fact, I have had an audience with the bear king himself. Ragnar Sturluson. This is because the directors were worried that Jorek Bernersson and Jofa Ragnarsson sounded too similar and they didn't want their viewers to be confused. We see an extra scene in the TV show that we don't see in the movie or in the book. We see Mrs. Coulter coming to talk to Jofa Ragnarsson. King Ragnarsson, I was a great help in aiding you in the disposal of Jorek Bernersson and helping you take your throne. And I agreed to capture Asriel to repay my debt. Though we do find out later that they were working together, we never actually see them working together on screen, or I guess on paper, in the books. I mentioned earlier on that Jofa Ragnarsson is very tied to the Magisterium. We do see this in the TV show and in the books, however in the movie this is never brought up. In fact, there's no mention of him having any kind of human alliances. In the book and in the movie, we see that Jofa Ragnarsson has a doll on his lap when Lyra comes to see him. Do you remember what Mrs. Coulter said? Back at Jordan. He uses this doll as a makeshift demon. This is how far his obsession has gone. However, we don't see this doll on the TV show. The fight that Jofa and Jurek have is also different across the three mediums. In the TV show, the fight is very similar to what we see described in the books. However, it takes place indoors, not outdoors like we see in the books. And in the TV show, they're naked, whereas in the books, they're wearing their armor. In the movie, the fight takes place outdoors and they're wearing their armor, like in the book. <laughs> However, another huge difference in the movie is Yurik never mentions that he tricks Jofa or Ragnar during their fight. This is a pivotal moment in the book and in the TV show. You tricked a bear. He wasn't a bear. You showed me that. We learned from Yurik earlier on in the series that it's impossible to trick an armored bear. He even gets Lyra to test this theory and she confirms there's no way of tricking them. However, Lyra is able to trick Jofa into thinking she's a demon and later Yurik tricks him during the fight. I tricked him so he wouldn't just kill you at the gates. 
You tricked him. This is huge. It shows that Yofa is no longer really an armored bear. He's much more human than anything else. And this being a human is what leads to his downfall. Removing this from the movie is a huge mistake in my opinion. They needed to keep that aspect of his character. In the movie, Ragnar Stolason, or Yofa Ragnarsson, is played by Ian McShane. Peter Serafinovich plays Yofa Ragnarsson for the TV show. What do you think of the idea of changing Yofa Ragnarsson's name for the movie? Do you think it made sense or it was just a needless change? Please tell me in the comment section down below. And until next time, happy bubbles! Thanks so much for liking this video and thank you to my Patreon bubbles for supporting the channel. If you want to see the other characters from the His Dark Material series I've already covered, you can click on the box on the left. Or you can click on the box on the right to see the most recent video that I have uploaded. Thanks for liking this video, subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell!